Well, I'd like to talk to you guys a little about one of my friends. Uh, his name is Alison uh, Eugenio. He's the guy there in the middle. He is an entrepreneur in Brazil. Um, but he's not just any entrepreneur. When you think of entrepreneurs, um, especially here in the United States, we think of people who risk a lot and they go out and they make millions. Um, Alison is a necessity entrepreneur. So Alison is an entrepreneur because he was forced to be an entrepreneur. Um, he had a job, uh, a simple job, but he was stocking shelves at a grocery store. Unfortunately, he was fired from that job, let go. Um, and in Brazil, he was actually let go illegally. So they had to continue to pay him for a couple of months because of what they did. So he had a little bit of a buffer for a couple of months. Um, but after that three months was over, um, he was gonna be uh, without any income. And his wife is there in the picture as well. She has, um, she had three kids from a previous marriage, and so they, they have three kids to take care of. And this is their small water distributing business. So he was forced into this business because there was nothing else to do. And so he, he created this business, him and his wife, they got this little shop and they built it, um, and they started distributing water. Uh, but unfortunately, there were a lot of difficulties with that. Um, like any other entrepreneur, they run into problems they have to uh, deal with. And a lot of his issues were around how much he was selling. So we had to be able to help him to um, learn how to sell his product better and how to uh, do different things so that he could get the capital and the resources he needs. Um, so Allison is like a lot of other uh, necessity entrepreneurs throughout the world. Um, there's estimated to be four billion people that are living at under two and a half dollars a day. And so he's part of that large group of four billion people. So I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit um, about what it means to eliminate poverty. And, they, and even ask a question, um, what do you guys think is the best way to eliminate poverty? What are some ideas or some thoughts? Yeah? Education. Education, great. What else? Great yeah. job opportunities. Job opportunities, awesome. Anything else? Microloans. Microloans, awesome. So there are lots of different things, different ways to, to go after this problem of poverty. And there's been countless organizations, nonprofits, for-profit organizations, governments that have tried to solve this problem. And I would like to propose today um, one word, and that is self-reliance. And self-reliance, to me, is the way to eliminate poverty in people's lives. So there's a, um, a quote that I really like um, from uh, Thomas S. Monson that says, it is an essential element in our spiritual and our, as well as our temporal well-being, and that he quotes Elder Romney in this. He says, salvation cannot be obtained on any other principle. So that's pretty strong words. Salvation can be obtained only um, on the principle of self-reliance. So we need to be able to teach people how to become self-reliant and become self-reliant ourselves. And so thinking about this whole idea of the micro movement, um, I wanted to talk a little about what is micro? What does this word micro mean? Um, we hear a lot of it going out. We heard micro lending from the crowd. So, so what is micro? Um, micro is simply a way to reach the market, the four billion people that are living on less than two and a half dollars a day. Um, that is a huge market. There's lots of opportunities within that market. But in the past, people have been scared to enter that market because of the price point, right? They only have making two and a half dollars a day. It's hard to um, be able to market products or services to that group. Um, but what the micro movement is doing is it's finding sustainable and scalable ways to market their products and their services to these um, to this group of four billion people, and they do that by um, finding a, a model that works within that smaller environment and then scaling it to the to reach large numbers of of people. So that's the idea behind um, the micro movement. And if you think about it, and um, we already heard one micro lending. There's lots of micros. We've got microfinance, micro enterprise education micro-franchising, micro-insurance, micro-savings, all of these different um, you know, micro words that talk about uh, how we can reach that market and that, that four billion market. Um, I wanna tell you guys a little bit about one of my heroes. Um, some of you probably recognize the picture, but this is Muhammad Yunus. Um, he's known to be the father of microfinance. And microfinance um, with Muhammad Yunus started in a very simple way. He, he was in a village, he was going around trying to figure out how can he help these people lift themselves out of poverty and how can he, and he, how can he really help the people that he kept seeing. And he met a group of 42 women. Um, he had $27 US dollars in his pocket 
um, the equivalent of 27 US dollars, and he decided that he was going to loan that money to these 42 women. Um, at the time, they were dealing with loan sharks, dealing with really high interest rates. Um, they were stuck in this cycle of poverty um, because of those loan sharks and because of the interest rates they were paying. And so Muhammad Yunus was able to loan that money and figure out a sustainable way to um, help them pay that money back over time and create a viable business model. And the traditional banks at the time said it couldn't work, it wouldn't work. Um, but as we know, uh, Muhammad Yunus um, started the Grameen Bank, which is also known as the Village Bank. And um, the Green Bank, as of last year, um, had over 6.7 million active borrowers, and total assets of almost $2 billion, and a loan portfolio of $1 billion. So they, they were able to go from that group of 42 women um, to helping a major population throughout the world, reaching that market throughout the world. And now there are over 10,000 microfinance institutions like the Green Bank that are spread throughout the world, trying to provide capital and resources to these um, the, the, the bottom four billion. And so that is one way to be able to help people become self-reliant, provide them with the capital and with the resources and the training, the education they need to be able to empower themselves to lift themselves out of poverty. And, and truly that's the way they're gonna be able to do it is, is in, um, empowering, becoming empowered to, to become self-reliant and, and create that for themselves. So if I've done a good enough job, you're probably thinking or asking yourself this question right now, how can I get involved? What can I do to find out more? Um, we have an awesome resource here on campus, the Ballard Center, um, throwing a little plug for them. Um, they will connect you with all these different organizations that are focused on this micro movement. Um, and they're all involved with different areas, education, um, lending, benefits, all these different areas, entrepreneurship. Um, they'll connect you with those organizations and help you to be able to find out more. And an even simpler way, the way I actually got involved with microcredit and microfinance was um, through this organization, Kiva. Um, some of you have probably heard of it, but it's a simple way to um, go online, kiva.org, and you can lend as little as $25 to a group of individuals or, or just an individual and be able to help them start and run their small business. And over time, it's a zero interest loan, you'll get that money back and then you'll be able to give it to someone else or take it out, whatever you want to do with it. But um, this helps create self-reliance, providing people with the capital and the resources they need. And, and I strongly believe that if we can help them, um, help that bottom billion, the bottom four billion, to be able to be empowered, to become self-reliant, uh, we can eliminate poverty in the lives of those individuals. Thank you. You guys have any questions? Yeah. Does microfinancing happen in the United States? Within yeah. Within the United States? Yes. Um, in fact, you can go on to Kiva and um, the Grameen actually also, the Grameen Bank has an organization in the United States. It's called Grameen USA um, and they, they do micro lending here. So do. it's a little bit higher. The, the amount that they lend is usually higher, um, but it, it's a very successful model here. Is there well. anyone in the United States or a substantial population that belongs to that bottom four billion? Um, there's, I don't know the exact answer, but I would assume not as many yeah. um, because of different programs that we have here in the United States as well. And, and really it's a combined effort. Um, I think there's a lot of different ways to, to attack it. That second slide showed, you know, there's different welfare systems, there are different things, um, but when it comes down to if we can create self-reliance, that's, that's what I believe is the key to, to helping people get out of that, that situation. So yeah, but, but these programs also help people in the other um, markets as well, not just the bottom four billion. Any other questions? Yeah. So I've heard about how micro loans have to be substantial enough in order for the impact to be long term. Or yes, and so do you know anything about that? I guess um, yeah. What what's your argument for that? Because a lot of these it looks like the loans are smaller, and so maybe not enough to really poverty. Right, so um, the idea with microfinance is to provide them with the capital they need to be able to either, most of them are business loans or education loans, um, so that they can um, create businesses or create opportunities to be able to provide for themselves. Um, like the, the Kiva model is that um, multiple people can donate a small amount, like $25, but the larger amount that they're asking, and most of them are asking for you know, $300 or 
different, you know, it's upwards, it goes all the way up, but, um, you know, $1,000, $2,000 to do different things, get more inventory, whatever it is they need to create their business or to better their business, um, they can get that money and then plug it into their business. And so it's not a donation, but it's really a loan where they can then pay it back over time and you and, and be able to work that off and then also put that into their business to make money. Does that answer your question? Okay. Is that anything else? Any other questions? Oh, yeah. So the, uh, the Green three Bank, do they offer, are they also zero percent loans or how are they? No, so um, traditional, the, the actual lender, um, and even with Kiva, there is an interest rate. So, so you give the money, but then Kiva will give that, they're just kind of the online portal, they'll give that to the on the ground institutions. Um, and their interest rates are, are different, um, but they're a lot better than you know, the loan sharks or the other people that would loan money in that situation. So they try and make it a, a market-based interest rate and make it fair for everyone. But there's, yeah, depending on the microfinance institution, they, the interest rates vary. Well, and that's how the institute stays afloat. Right. So the yeah, so some of them are um, for-profit businesses, some of them are non-profit, some are government-run, um, but they, they're able to continue to help more people. The idea is to help be able to help more people by having that interest rate and being self-sustainable instead of just a donation. Thank you. Thank you.